we ask that if you are a visitor, uh, two things. Um, you can fill a visitor card that's in front of your pew so that you can leave a mark of your presence and we can reach out to you if, um, just to acknowledge that you were here and, and see if there's any other way that we can uh, be of service. Um, there's also, oh, and also you, you, if you drove, please make sure that you um, get a parking pass from someone in the back or there's, um, there's more outside if you need to put one of these in your car. Um, also, we have a Wednesday prayer group. If you have a prayer request, please fill out your uh, blue card in front of your pew, and um, someone will pray over your request on Wednesday. Um, as some of you um, have noticed, the banner out front went up again because everyone is welcome here, including immigrants and refugees. Deacons are working to find concrete ways to help this community. As part of our outreach, we have compiled a list of resources um, that is kept in the church office. We welcome suggestions from the congregation to expand this outreach. One way to bring others to know Jesus is to bring them to church, but another way is to help any of your neighbors that may be in need of some resources. Um, let a deacon know or call Jackie at the church office. Um, at this time, we welcome back to our pulpit, our guest, uh, Reverend Glenn Missick. And um, if you'd like to read a little bit more about his background, it is in your bulletin. Welcome, Reverend Missick. Oh, I'm sorry, are there any other announcements that I know that you have transformation? Yes. Um, so in the spirit of experimentation, uh, the transformation team uh, is proposing an idea, but in order for it to happen, we need volunteers. And so what we talked about uh, the idea was on Tuesday evenings uh, in October, opening up the sanctuary from about 7 to 8 p.m. for silent prayer and meditation. And in order, in, this is available for congregants, for the community. Uh, in order to do this, we need some volunteers who will come in, uh, pick one Tuesday in the evening to be the person to open it up, greet visitors, and then close it when we're done. Uh, on the back is a sign-up sheet if you're willing to be a volunteer to help us out to do this. If there are no volunteers, then we won't do it, but if you get volunteers, then we will. Uh, so sign up. It's also in the weekly word if you want to sign up on Thanks. Any other announcements? Good morning. Good morning. Good to be back with you and on this uh, beautiful morning. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Eternal and most loving God, we bless you, we praise you, we thank you for another day. The land of the living, we thank you for another day in your house. We invoke the presence of your Holy Spirit here that all that we do and say may be done to honor and to glorify you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the 9 a.m. service. Hope you're not too sleepy. Um, let's all grab our green hymnals to be close to you in the pews or next to you. Um, and let us all stand and sing hymn number six, Come and Let Us Worship God. Let's all stand.
We, um, this is a time of prayer, so let us uh, hold a circle together. for this church as we start a new year of Sunday school. May you bless our children, the youth of our church, and the teachers. Those who are making their way to our shores as a result of the hurricane and the impending storm that's coming their way, that they may find refuge and safety and comfort here. Pray for the homeless from more and more. upon each person in the circle right now. You know all about them. You know more about them than I do. And so you touch their hearts, touch their bodies, their minds, and help them in their family life and their situation, their work. Give them uh, your peace and give them your joy and your love as you go about each week and each day. We bless you and we pray these. Lift up these prayers in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus, the one that brought us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom.
and then you brought it back into it. So, have you, have you, have you ever lost anything? Have you ever lost anything that you went back and looked for? What did you lose? A deck of cards. Is that what you said? Who are your parents? <laughs>
Let's give our young people a hand. Uh, 
I live here, I've been living here for many years now. And, uh, but Bahamas is, I, I have a lot of family, more family in the Bahamas, I think, than any place else. And I have two brothers um, in, in Freeport with a hurricane hit. And my only living aunt, right, my only living aunt uh, from my, from my grandfather, uh, out of 13 children. Um, she, but she, she, she's, she's okay, she's okay. And I've been all through the hurricane, uh, Hurricane Dorian. I, um, I, I've been calling him, and you know, in fact, I just spoke with him yesterday, and he said that they're okay, but their houses and both have been destroyed. And I remember he was working on his house from the last hurricane, Maria. Um, so um, I, I wanted to call another cousin of mine whose family is from the Bahamas. He was born here. Uh, his name is Dorian Missick. And uh, Dorian is a movie star. And he's, he's married to Simone Missick, his wife, who will have a show coming out on CBS uh, probably next week. Uh, What's it called? Rise? All Rise? She's playing a judge. So if you can watch that, I just say, I know he's cousin. cousin. <laughs> but uh, I started to call, I, I tried to call, call it Dorian, but he wouldn't pick up the phone. I believe I know why he doesn't pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. So I was calling him during the hurricane. And his name is Dorian. So imagine, right? What am I going to say to Dorian? So, <laughs> but, um, so I think of uh, all of the people. So Jesus, Jesus, last week, as I said, the, the story, he talks about being disciples. If you want to be my disciples, you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Um, we all lose uh, uh, each other, but one of the persons we do not lose is, is God. And we do, not, um, we do not lose that connection, if we have that connection, with God through Jesus Christ and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So today, Jesus continued the stories. Uh, he tells, he, tells, he speaks in parables. Parables, if anybody learned back in Sunday schools, that parables is a... Uh, is an uh, earthly story, Mr. Union Man, with uh, spiritual meaning. It comes from something like that, you know. Okay, but it's a story. Jesus told stories, and one of the best ways in communicating sometimes uh, is to tell stories. I'm not a good storyteller, uh, as you can see, working with the kids, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I like to make, I like those three-point sermons. But here, in this passage that was read earlier, we have two parables, or two stories. One about the lost sheep. I don't know much about sheep. Where I grew up, we didn't have sheep. We barely had goats. When I went to school in Jamaica, we had goats. I, lo I love me some curry goat. <laughs> curry goat rice, right? Um, but... Sheep, as you know, are not um, that obedient. You have to teach them where to go. And so Jesus equates us as, as, as members of his family, as disciples. As, by the way, disciple means follower. There, there are many church members, but there are a lot of disciples. You can, you can easily be a church member and not be a disciple. Think about that as you as you go along, okay? Because you know, a church member, it, it, it's similar to um, to people who want Jesus as Savior, but they don't want Him as Lord. Okay, Savior means you want Him whenever something happens to you, whenever you're sick, you want to pray, Oh Jesus, please help me. Whenever you're in trouble, please, Jesus, please help me. Everybody prays, so. I, in those churches where uh, they ask people to put their hands in the air when they praise God, and you know, and there's, there's some people, I know some churches that says, no, 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 we show them. And they put their hands back here and they hold their hands down. We don't do that here. We're the church of the frozen chosen. Frozen. We're the church of the refrigerator. We don't do that here. We don't praise God the way those those people do it. Well, what I like to say to those people is that if you don't do that, because we all know how to praise, 
If a policeman pulls us up and, and pulls us over for running a red light, as my wife did this morning trying to get here a little bit, <laughs> she almost, what, what was that like you pulled her in? She said, oh my God. You know? <laughs> and, and, and if a police pulls us over um, and asks us to get out of the car, and they ask us to assume the position, right? I don't know if you've been in that. I haven't been in too many of them. Because I always pull my clergy card out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say, hey, you know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a clergy person. I'm a good person. So and quite often I'll just put it under my license. And when they look at it, they say, Reverend, it's okay. Go on. Just be careful next time. Okay? So I get away with that. But um, quite often, if a policeman were to pull us out, and we would do what? We would raise our hands, right? So we know how to raise our hands. God asks us sometimes that if you want to praise me, you lift your hands. If you ever go to a Jewish um, synagogue, I, I ran into my good friend, uh, Rabbi Robert Levine, at Rulaf Shalom, I uh, ran, ran down to him in over 20 something years, and we just ran to each other on the road. And, Give each other a big hug and all that. But we used to go there for their Seder meal and watch how they worship and, and how they praise God. The Jewish people really knew how to praise God. David knew how to praise God. When you look in the Psalms, you know, bless the Lord, oh my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. So we need to learn how to praise God. And, and, and so in, in, this, in this parable of the lost sheep, Jesus says that the shepherd who one sheep straight, one sheep straight out of 100, one sheep straight. Now, most churches, if one member leaves, uh, nah, it's okay, we'll get another member. We don't usually follow up, but I know you don't do that here, but I do know churches that they never give a call and find out what's happened to the person. The person might have left because of some circumstance. A person may be sick, a person may be in some situation that they cannot get out of. And so, uh, thank you for your deacons here and for the service that they do, that you reach out. And I urge you to continue to reach out to, to your members, and, uh, because reaching out to your members is a demonstration of how you're going to treat the stranger that walks in. Um, it starts with us. I, I often say you can't lead where you don't go and you can't teach what you don't know. So we practice with each other by reaching out to each other. And to, you know, when a person's not here on a Sunday, do we reach out and call that person and say, hey, we miss you. And so this, the shepherd went and looked for that sheep. And he searched diligently for that sheep, Jesus said, until he found the sheep. And the point is, and, and, and the, the point of the story is always at the at the last verse of that, um, of that narrative. And in verse 7, Jesus says, Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Okay? Over one person. At one person. Jesus cares for that one person. Jesus cares for the immigrants. Jesus cares for the people in the Bahamas. If you think that my, my, my family, most of my family were on Abaco, I'm sorry, we're on Grand Bahama Island. It's a big island. You ever get a chance to go over there. By the way, I heard it on the news last night. They said that the best way to help the Bahamas now is to go book a ticket there. There, there are like there's 700 islands and now oh, not all of them hit, just two. But I, I asked my brother yesterday, I said, do we have any family in Abaco? He said, I, I believe we do. There are a lot of lost people in Abaco. A lot of lost people in also in Grand Bahama. And they got some of the people out, but now they're searching for those people who are really lost, who, who are dead. And I heard that the stench is really strong there. So this is a very serious situation. And imagine now this other storm that is coming up. I heard that it's going away uh, from the Bahamas. Thank God. Prayers do work. And so continue to pray for 
the lost people in the Bahamas, and particularly those who have lost just about everything. My brother said that they, they cannot uh, take a shower with the water, they can't do because the water is all salty, and um, so they're drinking out of bottled waters. So I said to him, I said, remember you taught me many years ago uh, uh, something called the cowboy? Anybody here, you guys ever heard about the cowboy? You know, you, you, you don't, when you don't take a, a, a sorry, I'm getting deep into this, but you know, <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in hot water right now. But anyway, you can literally take a bath with a bottle of water. Okay, you get a washcloth, you pour the water on the washcloth, and you wash yourself up like that. Anybody been in the hospital, you know what I'm talking about, right? You don't take a shower in the hospital, you, they wash you down like that. So he said that a lot of them have learned, I'm learning how to do that. And the things that we take for granted sometimes, that we have a shower, we have a bathtub, and all of that, that here are people now that have to use bottled water to take, just to clean themselves up. So please, uh, be mindful of the blessings of God. So. Then secondly, in the second parable, Jesus talks about the woman who had, who had been the lost coin. And, and I like this. So she, you know, he says that there was a woman having ten silver coins. Uh, if she loses one of them, does not, a, does, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors. Say, rejoice with me, for I have found a coin that I had lost. Here's the kicker here. Again, at the end of the, of the, of the, of the narrative, in verse 10, and I posted this actually on Facebook this morning. By the way, uh, you want to be a witness sometimes, uh, social media today, uh, instead of, I don't know how many of you use it, sometimes, what I do every Saturday night before I go to bed, so that when people wake up that next morning, I post a scripture lesson, and usually it's my text, and you'd be surprised that the people who wait for that and use it, quite often when I don't do it, people will write to me and say, hey, what happened? I missed my verse this morning. So the verse that I, I posted last night before I went to bed was verse 10 of this 15th chapter of Luke. Just so I tell you, Jesus says, there is joy in the presence of the angels, of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. There's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The God we serve is a loving God. No matter what we do, no matter how far we stray, I was talking with a stuff, teaching a class, um, Introduction to Sociology, and one lady in the class who, um, she, she has a British accent, and she, she's from England, and she said, she said that, well, I'm a Christian, but I, but I used to, she said, I used to be a Christian, I don't think I'm a Christian anymore. And I said, there's no such thing. Once you hook up with the Lord, you, you, you're always a Christian. Uh, you know, you, you, you just, you, you can't just break that relationship unless you just cut it off, cut it off. And even when you cut it off, God is still searching for you. And I said, you're still a Christian. You just need, we need to renew your faith in the Lord. You, you, we, we aired and strayed from my ways like lost sheep. Remember that prayer? And so I said, try to get reconnected back with the Lord. And so God, God is saying, Jesus is saying you know, that you know that the angels in heaven rejoice over one person. It means that God cares for us. God doesn't just care for members of church in the garden. God cares for the immigrant. God cares for the people in the Bahamas. God cares for other people out there, the homeless, people who are in prison, who are incarcerated. And God cares for the little children who have no families, for the little children who are confused. God loves them. God cares for them. That's why I had them repeat that little song. I'm sure that many of us who are older know that when we were growing up, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Is that what I told you? The little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves the lost. Lost. If you feel lost this morning, I'm here to let you know that 
God, that Jesus is reaching out to you and he's saying, come back home. There's a table spread for you, a table where you can eat and be nourished, a table where, where there is good food, a table where there is healthy food. And if you come back home and come and be nourished and grow in me, one of these days when we, you leave this body, you will hear me say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. And the Lord bless us this morning and help us to know that he, he loves us in such a mighty way, even when we feel lost. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Now have our offering.
given us people who love us and whom we love. In this we find comfort. You have also placed others in our lives who we find more difficult to love. In this we find our challenge and your call. Open our eyes to see your face in every person we meet. Open our hearts to count each person as our brother or sister. Use these gifts so that we may show even those that are lost that your love and compassion have no bounds. Amen. If you're just joining us for the first time today, it's our tradition to sing a closing song. You'll find the words, turn your eyes upon Jesus even more. Let us all stand and sing. Thank you. 